in Hutchinson, Kansas today, and I'm going to visit that building right there that's called the Cosmosphere. And it's like a science and space museum. It's here on the campus of Hutchinson Community College, so you can see the football stadium and track right behind me. I've lived about 40 miles from here for 20 years, and I've never been to this museum that a lot of people rave about. So let's go in and check it out. Once you go in through the entrance to the Cosmosphere, there are some big structures hanging on the wall that you can check out, but mainly this is an area to buy your tickets and go to a few different areas. It's $18 for just like the general admission ticket. There's discounts for military, kids, senior citizens, things like that. And you can pay extra for different exhibits. They have a theater, as you can see there. I think they have a couple different theaters. They have a flight simulator. So you can pay extra for all that. They do have a cafe here and other things like, you know, getting your picture taken and kind of just fun things for kids maybe. And they do actually have a kids section as well. So it's definitely family friendly and really interesting to check out. So there are 13,000 space flight artifacts. And throughout the museum, it's a mix of real and models and replicas, and everything is historically accurate. So if you see even a replica, it's historically accurate to what the original was. And so when you're walking around, there's on the top floor, there's a lot of educational things besides uh, obviously really cool historical artifacts. So it's a mixture of looking at really interesting stuff the whole time, but then you can just learn <laughs> for hours and hours and hours. Really interesting history of how the museum started here. You know, you wonder why did this big museum, significant museum of space flight happen in Hutchinson, Kansas? And it originally, in 1962, started from a planetarium on the Kansas State Fairgrounds. Hutchison is where the, the State Fair is located. So it started as a planetarium and then expanded into what it is today. So now we're walking down stairs, I guess you'd say, to the first floor or the bottom floor. And there's the kids' section. So kids have kind of their own area that's... A fun space. So before you get into like the space race, it's a history of like rocketry and the history of how Germany was developing these things. Obviously these were developed for war and if you're a engineering type person, definitely would be a fascinating place for you to learn all about the history of rocketry and then how that developed into space flight. So a lot of very interesting historical artifacts down here in this section. Very sobering map there of all of the places that the V-bomb was dropped and the after effects. So now that we're through World War II, we get into the space race and this is very interesting section. This museum is home to the largest combined U.S. and Russia artifacts in the world in terms of space flight. So the, there's a museum in Washington, D.C. that houses more U.S. artifacts. There's a museum in Russia that has more Russian artifacts, but this is the one that has the most combined. And this is a Smithsonian-affiliated museum. 
So sometimes things get shipped here from there or they work on things here and ship them over to the Smithsonian. So a lot of great partnerships have been developed with the museum through the years. The early days of the space race for me was really interesting and how they used animals and how often those flights were unsuccessful. Obviously the political agendas were significant here and the very interesting Russian posters on the wall, I found that to be fascinating to check out. As we get a little further in here, they have a lot about the Soviet spaceflight missions and it's easily sought out in the red rooms and then the American versions are covered in blue. And I liked how they had so much information about the Soviet space program, just from a person who's interested in history. I'm interested in all the kind of history, not just American history. And so they definitely had a lot of it here. And then over to the United States again and their early successes and obviously eventually winning the race to land on the moon. There are just so many things tucked in rooms all around this museum. And believe it or not, I'm only showing you a little bit of it. So there's plenty more to see, so many things to read. And you could spend an entire day, literally an entire day if you wanted to see everything, maybe even multiple days. famous Apollo 13 mission that they made a really good movie about. If you want to know what it would be like to kind of sit in one of the structures, this would be it.
I really like this part of the museum where it has all kinds of cameras and camera equipment, video equipment that they use to film all their adventures and journeys. Obviously, as someone who's doing YouTube, the technology is fascinating to see how this stuff worked and what they were using. And our last section here is gonna be the Apollo White Room. This is where they stood before they got into their structure that would send them off into outer space. And so this is the actual White Room. So I hope you enjoyed that tour. If you're ever in Hutchinson, Kansas, it's definitely highly recommended place to visit.